Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another wonderful, man, this is going to be a, a, a mind-blowing episode. Ooh, lots of information. There's a lot going on in the world right now, and it ain't safe outside, y'all. I hope y'all got six masks on, or like 15 masks. Uh, it's your boy Chingo Bling. Uh, I'm actually coming at y'all raw and uncut, maskless. Uh, and we got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? How are you today? It's my favorite day of the week, day one of Red Pill Tamales. Hell yeah, man. And um, first of all, we got some tour dates coming up. Freedom of Speech Tour, Naples, Florida, Wednesday, February 10th. And then we hit West Palm Beach over there by mar a oh. February 11th. That's on a Thursday. And it's going down. Get your tickets now, chingobling.com. It is the Freedom of Speech Tour. Por favor, believe it. Also, I want to thank all of the patrons for signing up. And for giving us feedback on the new uh, show that we put together called Chingo Chats. That's the name right now. I, I, I don't know. We'll see if it sticks. Yeah, tentatively. T- TBD. But uh, it's non-political. All right. It's like I got to talk about. I mean, Rob was asking me questions. I was high. We talked about all kinds of stuff. Uh, except politics. No politics allowed on that show. And we have some very, very, very special guests coming up uh, on IG. Tell us up about Wake Up With Linda. Yeah, so she's like, uh, she was on Vice. She was uh, one of the ones that was on that show or that episode that they were doing like Latinos, uh, like conservative Latinos talking about, you know, pro-Trump against Trump, where Jorge Ramos' daughter was the one asking the questions. Uh-huh. What's up? Oh. What's up, boo? I'm done. You clean your room already? All right, well, hand her homework and... Yeah, but don't no, leave the phone there. Don't phone yet. Homework and all that. You'll get it later. You guys heard an exclusive parental strict. Uh, you know, we coming at y'all strict. That's going to stay in. So, so <laughs> perfect. So Linda was a, a moderator on there? No, she was one of the people. She was one of the pro-Trump uh, oh. guests. It was like it was like six and six or four and four, like four against Trump, four, uh, four, four Trump. This was like probably a year or two ago. And from there, she's kind of taken off. I believe she's Venezuelan, maybe Colombian, but she's got she's very conservative. I and think I think I saw that clip where it was like a dude with a bandana and like beads. That might have been one of the people in the panel. I don't I don't um, remember exactly. Okay. She was on, I think, one or two different Vice uh, shows or whatever. But she's one of these very like prominent conservative voices. She's in Florida, by the way. So she might want to come out to a show, you that'd know, because gr- we'll, be hopefully we'll do it next week. But uh, she, yeah, she's just she's very passionate about, you know, business and the conservative leaning type of like, let me do my shit. Let me get my grind on. None of the socialist bullshit because she comes from a place where she's very familiar you with that. You said she's Venezuelan? I think it's Venezuelan. Okay. But I we're going to talk to her about it. Yeah, I know Colombia is going through it right now, too. Uh, also, we got the homie Sam Tripoli representing that Tinfoil Hat podcast. Yeah, people waiting for that uh, collaboration. Maybe you guys can let us know what kind of conspiracies y'all want to talk about because I know Sam be on it. So he's a stand-up comedian, and he has a, a, an amazing podcast, so check him out. We'll have him on here soon as well. Also, uh, my boy XG, uh, who is the producer and co-host of Tim Four Hat with Sam Tripoli. Yeah, and you, we mentioned him in the last episode because you've known him for a while, right? Well, he uh, we, we got to hang out with him with uh, George Perez. Right, that's so right. That's he, what we're talking So he about. rode up to Fresno with us. He hung out in Long Beach with us, and uh, we stay in touch. And we have uh, Adriana from uh, Red Pilled America. That is a... Um, a big podcast is well put together. Have you ever heard? The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I started listening to it. So they have like that narrative style with like the music and the storytelling. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, can't wait to have that one coming up. And um, you know, and just it's we, a it's a list of guests basically, and some of them are gonna fall on patron exclusive uh, days. So I would encourage we would encourage you to sign up for the Patreon so you can get those exclusive uh, interviews because we're gonna try to get as many cool voices on the podcast during season three. This is a season finale of. of season two and the next ones you know tuesdays and thursdays they drop or two uh, wednesdays and fridays they drop so if you get it free it might be free but it might be on friday and it might be only for patrons yeah so uh you know that that cat uh gill from american cholo yeah podcast? so he had me on as a guest because i wanted to be a guest on his uh on his podcast because the way we first met was when all the shit hit the fan and people took them little clips of me to make me sound like a jerk and they had them on like the barrio of the internet, you yeah. know, the, all, the, all the cholo world stars, basically. Right. And so I think he was on there on the comment section, and he probably had like this long paragraph trying to figure something out. And I wasn't trying to listen to anybody. I was just like copy pasting my, you know, this is like when the shit first happened. Yeah. So I was just saying like Biden sniffs little girl's hair and stuff like that. Like y'all fucking not my pedophile. Like y'all voted for <laughs> this puto. And um, so anyway, we got off to a bad start, but I went ahead and reached out to like 
the majority of those pages or podcasts or YouTube channels that were trying to add a false narrative, like putting words in my mouth, like now Chingo's about building the wall and Chingo's about mass deportation or Chingo turned his back on his people. Chingo wants to be white, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So I, I sent all these people damn near. I was like, hey, you know, let's chop it up. Like, hit me up. You know, here's my number type of thing. So he was like the only one that was open to it, you know. Uh, so, you know, I, I got on there. I don't want to see the comments uh, because I'm assuming it's going to be like 99.99999% people that just think like uh, Trump is racist. He insulted the raza. Uh, and, and just basically we vote along the lines of skin color and democrats are for la raza yeah long story short orange man bad you know biden is the best we can do uh but it was it was a cool convo and it, it was good practice for me to try to like like call people out when when it's a question it's like a hypothetical like well i normally don't answer hypotheticals sure but you know what i mean or uh or oh well that's mind reading you can't just say come on chingo none of those politicians care about us you know trump hates mexicans and uh all Republicans are old, white, this and that, and they can't stand us, and this and that, and racist and white supremacy. And I'm like, well, I'm not a mind reader. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we, like you have to be careful of uh, of that habit of always assuming you could just look inside of someone's head. That's like a big one. Like people do it all the time. Like, oh, I get it. Chingo's trying to get that Griff money, and uh, Chingo trying to be like Candace Owens, or Chingo did it because of his taxes, and you know, people just want to assume a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> dude it's so it's so crazy because all it takes is just a little bit of, of of just patience and time and an open mind to listen to an opposing view you know even if it's somebody or in this case from who you who you feel should be on your side or in your camp right and they ref a lot of them refuse to some of them do i did glance at some of the comments uh and some people were like man you know this kind of brings me back around like the respects back up that kind of thing but you're right a lot of them are just still like ah, oh, i already made up my mind basically i'm not even gonna listen to this for that reason yeah and again this is probably like the most how do i put this uh this whole trump persona and his him as a caricature and 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 the way he is and the way the media you know, really fucking went out of their way to just, they did a great job. Oh, yeah. Just making him be like, <gasps> he's a fucking KKK, you know, this and that. He He's trying to uh, sell off America just for him and his kids. And, you know, why, yeah. why is Ivanka in, in the White House? And who the fuck is Jared Kushner? And, you know, they just look at the worst shit that they could possibly find. So it's like, if you wanted to test your persuasion skills or if you wanted to stick your neck out, this is probably the hardest thing to ever stick your neck out about for sure in the most difficult time to ever do that because we don't know what is what we can't we can't get good data like the the news is not news it's all narrative it's all opinion people get their opinions assigned to them and don't be knowing it uh we just all, a lot of us just assume that liberal and cnn and new york times and washington post and huff post these are all just very legitimate uh you know unbiased and they're they're helpful and they're yeah. trying to just give us information and they're telling us all the bad things trump is doing they don't really know that nah dog <laughs> they're fucking they're super biased like you know jeff bezos owns washington post they're never gonna say nothing bad about amazon yeah, and that's one of the things I want to try to do like from week to week is get some of the articles. And I'm trying to find them also to where it's like the same story, the same headline, and see how it's written by somebody on the far right and somebody on the far left and obviously a moderate. But it, it's it's tough sometimes because sometimes the the left won't even touch a, a particular subject, right? You're like, you'll just, they won't even, there'll be nothing written about it. And if it is, it's like buried at the bottom of their like news politics mm -hmm. section because there's not a way that they could spin it mm -hmm. tremendously in their favor. Yeah, like Antifa. I mean, do you think... Uh, a lot of these left-leaning publications are going to just go out of their way and, you know what I mean, and just do a whole bunch of coverage on Antifa unless they could find a way to make them racist, white Trump people. Yeah. Trumpies and Trumpers and all these little fucking bullshit nicknames. <laughs> these are some bullshit-ass nicknames, man. You know, I see it every day in my TikTok comments. You know, I used to like you before you were a Trumpy. It's like, okay, I don't identify as a Trumpy. Or, or the dude today was like, all this talk about red pill, you sound like one of those QAnon, 4chan, Reddit 
something, something. I was like, I don't know nothing about none of those websites. I'm not queuing on. You know, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. They're like, Red Pill, uh, it comes from 4chan, and those are people that don't like people that look like you or me. And I'm like, <laughs> bitch, Red Pill came from the Matrix, ho. You don't know about the Oracle and Morpheus and motherfucking Neo and Trinity? Damn, y'all stupid. Anyway. Did you come at him with, and I'm the Mexican Morpheus. Uh, so no. get your shit together. No, this shit would have went over his head. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, wasn't there like a website or an app or something that, it breaks down the left and the right. It is, actually. I, I We talked about it a long time ago, and it's in the sea of apps that I have, and I think it's called Both Sides, mm. unless mm-hmm. they've been deplatformed and taken off of the Amazon servers. Right. Build your own server, then. Oh, it's such a stupid Build argument. your own internet, then. Oh it's, <laughs> oh, it's called Both Sides. So, um, yeah, I haven't signed up for it yet, but it's literally it's called Both Sides, yeah. and it's supposed to have the daily, you know, kind of news articles on both sides of the, the spectrum, but... Even then, like you, I would think you still want to go do your own research because it is an app. We don't know how they're biased. Yeah, and shit is tricky these days, like especially when it comes to all this scientific data stuff. It's like, number one, who has access to all these legit studies? You know, first of all, have they even done a study that tests, okay, we're going to have a whole bunch of people, uh, half of them going to be maskless, half of them going to have a mask, and we're just going to see how many of them catch corona. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you can't just do an experiment where people are catching corona. Oh, yeah. as you're talking, man, that reminds me, I'm going to pull, pull something up to, to play uh, through the mixer about Tony Robbins. Have you seen this clip? What Tony happened? Robbins talking about coronavirus. Oh, what happened? Oh, well, we'll, we'll keep, keep going where you're going, because now we're talking about, yeah, like, with the studies and the double masking and the triple masking, that shit work? And oh, I can't wait to hear what you found. But obviously, uh, you know... It, from a cost benefit, from a risk management type of uh, analysis, you know, it makes, in my opinion, it makes sense to wear the mask. You know what I'm saying? Just wear it. And it's not necessarily a global conspiracy to get everybody to be sheep and this and that. Um, now, if they start promoting 10 masks and all this other shit, it starts getting a little ridiculous. But my point is, even if you do try to dive in to, to articles and this and that, how many of these studies are we even going to be able to understand? Two, how many of them are going to be debunked, you know, two weeks later? You know, like, we're not, right. we're not scientists. Like, we weren't there checking motherfuckers' hypotheses and shit, making sure that, bitch, did you clean that beaker? Because I could have swore that beaker came from over there. Like, and there's just a lot of flip-flopping, too, on what works and what doesn't work. So I think I found it here. I'm trying to pull it up for you so that you can watch it or we can listen to it. Mm-hmm. That boy, Tony Robbins. I used to jam his tapes back in the day. Did you? Mm Mm-hmm. Keep talking while I get this be a (laughs) That might be a subject for um, the Chingo Chats. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'll save that story because my sister... If you want to educate yourself, you don't have to be a person that's terribly... You know, you don't have to be Watch thinking this like in as different we listen ways. To it. Just go read John Hopkins' report. They took it down after one day, but two weeks ago they came out here in America... They took it down, but if you go on the Wayback Machine, you know, you can go back on your computer and go back in time on the web. So people have already published it again and again. And what it shows is the same number of people have died this year, 2020, has died in 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, and 2015. 2.8 million people. It's within 10 to 15,000 people every year. The same number of old people died in 2020. The only difference is when they looked by disease. Heart disease, for the first time in 30 years, has come down. Cancer has come down. But COVID has gone up in the exact proportions. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Same number of people die. By the way, in case you haven't noticed, the flu has disappeared. It's flatlined. Mm. What are the symptoms of the flu? And by the way, flu kills people, and especially kills older people. So we're living in a world where a lot of people might be overreacting because they're trying to protect us because they thought at a 3% mortality rate or 4%, that would be a pandemic. But today, figure out whose research you read, it's 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, which is the same as the flu. Mm -hmm. And if you're under 50, it's way below that. So we live in a world that if we let people control our focus, we're just gonna live in fear and do nothing. And we're gonna be people that manage our circumstances. Man, Tony Robbins is not a stupid person. <laughs> no, not he's, at all. He's not dumb. Um, 
And that article, and I, I you know, I remember somebody talking about this not too long ago, and then it got, you know, taken down from the John Hopkins, you know, dot org medicine website or whatever mm-hmm. after like not even a day or less. Really? So it's kind of been scrubbed, but you know, there's, there's a, what's this called? Wow. The, the Wayback Machine, there were basically anything that's ever been on the internet, you can still go back and see. Like you can see old websites, you can see how things, there's a stamp in time mm. that will always exist. Mm. So you can go back and if you just look up, and I have it here up for, uh, for viewers to watch along with you or look at along with you. Uh, the newsletter, John Hopkins, a closer look at U.S. deaths due to COVID. I would suggest going through it if you're interested and kind of looking at the chart, looking at the data. And again, this is by, from John Hopkins, for fuck's sake. It's not some QAnon 4chan person that put mm-hmm. this together. Yeah, uh, cause, cause, it's interesting. Because some cats, they're lazy and they just love to throw around a QAnon title, a label on the people. Like, bitch, I'm Chingo Bling at the Tamale King, ho. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like... Conspiracies are fun and all that, but I'm not, I didn't vote for Trump over some conspiracies. Yeah. You know, and I didn't stick my neck out and tell the fucking world just to, uh, you know, whatever people think, because I want to be white or some stupid shit like that. Coconut, gringo, bling, this, that. That's one of the dumbest shit, too. That's one of the most unfortunate. This is such a gringo post. It's like, bitch, I'm saying that we should have negotiated better with these political parties like Ice Cube, but instead, our. Latino leaders were too busy being cheerleaders and playing Despacito. Wasn't nobody going up to the both political parties saying, hey, man, we got a list of demands. You know, like, number one, free the kids out them cages, figure that shit out, because that's not a good look. And uh, Biden still ain't did it. And he's not going to do it. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Hopefully he will, and I'll give him some brownie points. Uh, have you, are you familiar with uh, Gad Sad? Yeah, remember I brought him up to you, the, uh, well, what is he, um, evolutionary biologist? Yeah. Fascinating guy. Yeah, he's pretty smart. He's a Leb- Lebanese Jewish. Yes. Uh, he's Lebanese Jewish. And um, did you see he went in on Seth Rogen? No. So one of the things that Gad said, uh, talks about a lot, is basically like um, how the left has perpetuated, I mean, that's, that's not the word, how the left has like taken over Hollywood and uh, you have a lot of virtue signaling. Mm-hmm. So basically, Seth Rogen was going at Ted Cruz and just talking all this like really left liberal, like, shut the fuck up, Ted Cruz, blah, 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 right? Mm-hmm. You know, typical Hollywood elite bullshit. Right. And Gad Sad, man, he went off on him. He was just like, oh, look, it's a rich, you know, <laughs> thanks to you. I mean, he was saying, thanks to capitalism. You know, you, you Canadian kid, you can come over here and make all this money. Right. Meanwhile, you're just virtue signaling. And uh, and he even said, uh, uh, hey, maybe put in a good word with your homie Harvey Weinstein because I'm trying to make it in uh, Hollywood. So he's basically <laughs> saying, bitch, you cool with Harvey Weinstein, ho. You know what I'm saying? You over there cool with Harvey. Um, you're talking all this shit. You don't know what the fuck's going on. I even chimed in. I was like, Seth, you need some stronger weed <laughs> to comprehend what's really going on you should have been like yeah come down to uh texas give you some of that austin rogan weed whatever they're mixing up over there off sixth street because you know they're mixing something up yeah uh it's really unfortunate when people like that who you're like ah you know you're you're supposed to be like the the comedian the artist the open-minded type of of a person but then again i guess it's a lot of people on that on the the left i guess from hollywood or whatever Mm -hmm. they tend to lean that way and you you had brought up uh jimmy kimmel before we started recording man and how many times does the left try to cancel oh poor jimmy kimmel and he's still siding with that. Man, could y'all hurry up and cancel Jimmy Kimmel for real? For the sixth time? <laughs> seventh time? I'm not even about cancel culture, but Jimmy Kimmel, at this point, he literally comes across as just a puppet. Yeah. Like, I get it. There's writers for these late night TV. I'm assuming a lot of artists and writers are, tend to be left liberal leaning. But God damn, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimmel in his monologue, it's like, so GameStop uh, stock went up when it shouldn't have. And, you know, there's these uh, Russian, you know, there's maybe Russian people and this and that. And, you know, they're trying to cheat maybe over Russian people. Basically, he's saying like they're cheating over uh, poor little Wall Street. It, he did a whole. F- f- OK, let me just <laughs> let me just back up. That was okay. his opening monologue. Let me let me just back up. All right. I, the type of stand-up that I appreciate is stand-up that that has some truth and um, holds, tr- uh, what is it, holds truth to power? Is that, is that how they say this shit? Okay, the phrase, yeah. So in other words, you're going to call out the powerful. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to defend Wall Street. 
because that's what it sounded like. Yeah. His, his little thing was like, oh, yeah, and uh, kids on Reddit and maybe some Russian, you know, provocateurs were tampering with stupid GameStop stock that should have been going down because no one shops there basically what he was saying like it was meant to go down these uh what is it the hedge fund people Mm -hmm. they weren't doing nothing wrong trying to shorten short the stocks and and all this and that and i'm like jimmy come on man you're supposed to be a stand-up like i i get it it's late night tv and the shit's corny but you're perpetuating this narrative that um wall street is the victim in all of this yeah you know it's like the game wasn't rigged before this shit yeah i'm gonna then that's also on the list of guests to get is people that are pretty savvy in the in the um financial and stocks Uh and investing but are also very like outspoken about politics because it's all one and the same right like it's all you, you better believe that that goes together like white on rice oh yeah and i wasn't really too like too hip to what the fuck was going on either until i just couldn't stop seeing it did you like read any articles or listen to some videos about yeah about everything going on yeah and wall street bets and all that Mm -hmm. it's fascinating shit yeah Mm -hmm. and it's interesting how you'll see some of these people on msnbc literally there was one guy cry like almost crying on screen about this is just an attack on the wealthy people (laughs) it was fucking hilarious well i know they lost billions and uh billions are they gonna bail them out or some shit i believe one firm's already been bailed out by another firm but, but not but not the government using our STEMI? Not yet, but you best believe they're gonna. Man, they're gonna give our STEMI away to Wall Street. And I know that uh, Wall Street gave Biden, the Biden campaign, 75 million. Yeah, 74, but I, 75. I, but I think in all fairness, I think Trump got some millions too from some Wall Street people. Probably. But not as much. But de todos modos, uh, puras mamadas. So yeah, Jimmy Kimmel, you on my shit list. You know, and it's funny too because one of his best friends and and longtime, uh, I don't know, entertainment co partners is is Adam Carolla, mm. who does shit with Prager U and is very oh, yeah, he's woke. I fuck with Adam. Very conservative leaning when it comes to just what you would think is common sense, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I don't. I haven't heard him bring up Jimmy Kimmel in a while, but it'd be interesting to just be able to fly on the well, wall during well, those conversations. I'm on Team Adam Carolla. And when it came to Gad Sad versus uh, Seth Rogen, sorry, brother. I love Pineapple Express. I love Super Bad, but I'm rocking with Sad, uh, Gad Sad on that one. And um, on the same subject, uh, there's a young lady named Amanda Ensing. She's a Latina from Nashville, but she's like this beauty influencer. Right. She does all these uh, YouTube videos and does these brand deals for makeup. And uh, she got into it with Sephora. So I guess she had been posting like really conservative stuff, like Christian, pro-Trump type of stuff. Like I think she posted a meme that was saying like the left, only we're allowed to write, Mm -hmm. you know, also the left, you know, blah, 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 stuff like that. So y'all already know, man, in this day and age, people don't really understand the nuance of of all this stuff. So some people are just like, ah, Republicans bad, Trump bad, orange man bad, cancel, cancel, cancel. So somebody made a fuss and they left, they like tagged Sephora. They're like, at Sephora, I didn't really like y'all before, but I really don't like y'all now that I know y'all are are, uh, sponsoring this, uh, a person that's dangerously involved in a MAGA something group uh, uh and i'm like what what kind of la- what kind of lazy ass fucking tweet was that too it was just like it was just some bullshit attempt to la- literally like you said take food out of somebody's mouth and somebody's fucking family yeah they did that to me too with uh we had did the the Los muertos campaign with um modelo oh yeah, it was yeah, with yeah modelo shout out to modelo they took care they took care of us Holla. uh it was a great deal but people started tagging modelo like you know, this guy voted for Trump. He's a Trumpy, Trumper, Trumpy, this and that. <laughs> Modelo, is this the kind of people you have Trumpy Trumpers over there? Modelo, tagging Modelo and shit. I'm like, ah, Lee, y'all sloppy. Anyway, so this Amanda Insane girl, she's very sharp. She's smart. She defended herself very well. Um, and, I, you know, a lot of people have her back. Uh, I'm sure a lot of ignorant people probably like, <laughs> unsubscribe, you know, whatever. But she's basically saying my lawyers made sure that there was a clause in there. She she says something like, I asked ahead of time. I asked the forest people, do y'all discriminate against people's political views or religious beliefs? And they were like, no, you know, of course not. Right. But 
they're dropping her. They're trying not to pay her. And they're backpedaling on this business relationship. It's, it's so basically, all these conservatives are like calling, complaining, and tagging them and, and tweeting at Sephora. And they're just basically like, yeah, whatever. Uh, sorry. Yo, that might be one of the things that gets me most pissed off about everything that goes on with politics and people's closed-mindedness is that, that they try to do that. They try to attack somebody's livelihood. And this girl, she just looks pretty young. She's mm-hmm. probably a young girl who's been on YouTube for a hot minute doing these mm-hmm. uh, makeup videos. And somebody could tweet, one tweet, who t- it could be an egg fucking avatar that has no followers or a nobody, and that company will listen to it as if that were the majority on the internet or around the world. Not only that... What did Amanda Ensing do wrong? Like, what did she post that was negative, hateful, ignorant? Her whole thing is like, I'm about truth, light, and positivity. Like, well, to some people, that's negative as fuck. What the truth, light, positivity? Yup. Are you serious? Yeah, of course they are. We've all seen these things that get they get like labeled as hate speech when it's Mm. something is like, have a blessed day, you beautiful human being. How dare you tell me to have a blessed day? Yeah, I don't know, but the fact of the matter is, like, she didn't do anything wrong except. publicly said she voted for trump it's so dumb that's it she just was like proud to be christian proud conservative she says she voted for trump i think she wore like a little trump sweater or something and that was enough for people to be hurt insulted offended want to cancel maybe maybe people on the left don't see it from the same perspective because to me it's ridiculous it's ridiculous that a makeup brand would literally bend to the mob and, and in essence, cancel half the country, potentially half of their consumers, as if they don't want any conservative dollars. It's like, so is now now there needs to be a conservative makeup? Like, we're going to have two of everything? There's going to be two internets? You know what I mean? It's funny. It's like we're working our way back into like a segregated time. You know what I mean? Where you stay over there, you be over there, everybody be cool, but in their separate little worlds. It's like we're going backwards. Uh, is, is, uh, Meanwhile, I mean, some people are like, no, this is what progress looks like. We all separate into our own little camps, and that's how we live our life. That doesn't so, make any fucking sense. I mean, at some point, uh, maybe historians will look back, and they may be able to measure the amount of hysteria and propaganda and the amount of fake news and just how, uh, what's the word, hypnotized, like just how our brains have been fucked with yeah. this entire, I'd say, it, I mean, really for some time, but especially the past five years, yeah. our brain has been rattled. Everything from stay in the house, don't go, do you have a job? Maybe you do uh, 15 days to slow the spread, orange man bad, kids in cages, uh, so on and so forth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where it's like... It's overwhelming. They're just going to look back and be like, like, it, like if 10 years ago, I would have told somebody like, hey, man, it's watch in the year 2020. Shit's going to be so fucked up that you will literally be canceled if you say you vote for this one particular person who, I mean, yeah, he tweets weird shit, says things the wrong way, is offensive. And he, you know, he's a mean guy. Yeah. But guess what? Iran didn't want no smoke. China didn't want no smoke. North Korea didn't want no smoke. Didn't know about Al Qaeda, ISIS. We didn't have none of them problems. No new wars. And I brought that up, the no new wars thing on, yeah. on Gil's podcast. He's like, oh, come on, Chingo. You're telling me that we ain't been in these perpetual wars for decades and the Republicans and this and that. And, and I'm like, okay, maybe he didn't hear the part where I said no new wars. Yeah. And I think some of the troops he was trying to bring home, some of the generals lied to him and and... Gave, they gave Trump some false info. Yeah, so on, that how, they, yep, yep, yep. on how many people they brought back. But, you know, people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They're just like, no, nah, wait, Hillary's good or something. Yeah, um, they, it, modern day politics, <clears throat> and I, I think this all the time as of late, is what would life have been like if this pandemic hadn't, like, not just life, but the political, you know, spectrum. How would it all have been if the coronavirus virus had never happened, right? Uh-huh. Like, would people have been this... Would 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 it been so high? Would people be at nah, fucking death con nine at everything no, about think, everything? I think it made it worse because you compound people. Not only are they stuck at home, they're thinking about their careers, their jobs, their futures. Yeah, and it's like really messing with people's minds because it's like, especially if you're stuck at home and you just can't do shit. You know what I mean? And you're just turning on the TV and you see 
Portland on fire. They got a Chaz over here. They got a Chop over there. And, and you and you see these Democrat uh, governors and mayors and Cuomo and and talking all that shit. And then you see CNN just covering for everybody. Like, no, uh, Cuomo did not send old people back to the old folks' home. He's actually nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> and then it's like, no, those are mostly peaceful. It's like, what? Antifa's not a thing. That's just an idea. And it's like, what the fuck are these piles of bricks? Who are these assholes with umbrellas breaking every goddamn thing? Who's going to pay for this? Why is nobody arresting them? Well, um, you know, we just got to get Trump out. And the chaos is only going to get worse. And people fucking fell for it. It did. And now he's out. He's out, right? And, and now y'all can't blame everything on him. Can't blame it. They're going to continue to pull it along. You know, this whole fucking impeachment that's going nowhere. But, you know, tax dollars are going to pay for it. So we're going to see where it goes. Oh, but It's as if they don't have any other important work to do. It's you, almost as if Congress ain't got other shit to do. You would think other than impe or impeaching the former president, having other Congress people, uh, what are they calling it? They're trying to have them basically taken out of their congressional seats, uh, what expelled. Mm -hmm. you know taking their assignments away whatever they're doing it's really so it, it's really weird because now i think as of january cnn's uh viewership went down 44 percent. i think i saw they ain't got shit to talk they about. they ain't got shit to talk about right so they're gonna try to drum up as much uh clickbaity you know fake headliney kind of thing like insurrection talk yeah and that's exactly what it's gonna be the all, big lie all of these stories are gonna be coming out from people that were at the capitol now by no means are we saying that the capitol protest riots whatever you want to call them were were a good thing i like to call it an assault on our capital an assault the assault it was an assault and one good point actually before i even get to the aoc thing because that's making the rounds today mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um somebody had, had made a really good point of when trump was giving his speech right it was about i think 1.2 miles away from the capitol itself and Literally, when he got off the stage and to when the actual assault happened, was it, it literally would have shattered any one-minute mile record possible in order for those people that would have heard the speech to get into the Capitol. Yeah, I mean, you know. It literally, just it wouldn't it can't happen. So who was already setting this up? How was it already going down? Basically, simultaneously, as this guy's getting off the fucking stage. Yeah, well, I just mean, saying, just stuff I see on I the mean, internet. I mean, I know his lawyers quit because they didn't want to sit up there and be like, "What happened to the votes?" You know, because that's probably what he wanted to talk about. Yeah, kind of like, "Hey, man, what y'all do with my votes?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, y'all switch some of my votes, and his, I guess his legal team is like, uh, "We don't, we don't want to bring that up anymore." We're gonna have to get back to you on that. We're, We're gonna have to circle back. Circle back. That lady, dude, uh, Chucky. What's her name? Jen Pa, Jen uh, Saki. One, one time at band camp, Saki. <laughs> she does look like that chick. Yeah. But again, everybody looks, at, it's like two movies on the same screen. Some people see, some people still have TDS. Some people still have Trump derangement syndrome. I used to have it. And that's why people love to bring up old shit. Like, oh yeah, Chingo, you're a hypocrite because you used to make these shirts and koozies and things that said, fuck Donald Trump. I'm like, yeah, I did. That was a long time ago. What the fuck is your point? Yeah. You switched up on us, homie. Back when you were for the Rasa. And I'm like, okay, I had a bad case of TDS. Yeah. It's called Trump derangement syndrome, where you believe everything on CNN, and you really think this man is orange man bad. And then you start to see half the shit you hate him for didn't happen. He didn't say it that he didn't say them things or he didn't say it like that. Shit's out of context. He never said drink bleach. He never called the Nazis fine fucking people. And I'm, you know what I mean? But you can't red pill everybody. So when I went on Gil's podcast, American Cholo, um, or it's like a live stream show podcast for all, for all practical purposes. Mm -hmm. I should have reminded myself, Chingo, 99% of the people watching this shit all got TDS. Yeah. So it's like people that see Jen Psaki, whatever we see like this bitch is unprepared. Excuse my language. Cause I know some of y'all going to try to make it like, oh, it's cause she's a female. That's what he called her that. Nah, he said this bitch. I said this bitch, so, you know, <laughs> fuck it. It's a term of endearment. Uh, sometimes my homie Joe, sometimes I'll call him a bitch. <laughs> so anyway, well, I'm gonna Joe. anyway, um, half the country is like, well, she seems very prepared. Like, I clowned her on my TikTok. I did a little duet thing nice. where someone's filming their uh, their TV and she's on there saying, circle back, circle back, circle back. And I'm just like reacting to it. Some of the comments are like, well, it's better for her to circle back instead of just spewing lies like Kaylee. And I'm like, what? Kaylee was the shit. Kaylee McEnany always had answers. She always called out the, the bullshit, hypocritical journalists who are either activists 
uh, trying to have them gotcha questions. Every question was like, uh, what does the president have to say for the 300,000 Americans that are no longer here on his watch? And she, you know what I'm saying? It's like, this Jen chick, no mamas. What happened here? White House asked reporters to submit questions ahead of daily press briefings. Yup. So she wants a heads up on what y'all finna ask me. Yup. And they're basically like, well, that's not really freedom of the press, right? You know, and who's uh, the Blaze report of this? So, you know, we're getting a little bit left, right, and left, right, left, right here from news outlets. But yeah, she basically, they, they want, and, you know, people were like, um, but that's not power, that, that's not free press, right? You're wanting to be prepared and pick and choose what you want. They're like, no, we just want, you know, they gave some bullshit like responses to why they, they want that. It's not for, you know, picking and choosing. By no means, guys, it's not what we're trying to do. But everybody's on autopilot right now, especially like, a lot of people that voted for Biden, I literally have seen tweets like this, Rob. Um, finally, the adults are in the White House. We can all rest well at night. We don't have to wake up in the morning wondering, are we at war? What did the president tweet now? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it was four years of peace. It was no new wars. He took out Solomon, Solomon A. He took out al-Baghdadi. Al ISIS didn't want no smoke. Al Qaeda didn't want no smoke. Iran was chilling, even though we smoked Soleimani. And uh, and all of a sudden, and now you got China starting to really press uh, Biden. They're really testing him a little bit. China. Um, yeah, China. Uh, Iran, it, supposedly, according to the Biden administration, they're weeks away from having everything they need for a nuke. And then you got this other country called Burma. Some people call it Myanmar, Myanmar, Myanmar. They had a military coup, but yet Biden's administration, they hesitated. They're like, uh, we don't know if that was a coup or not. It's like, bitch, they had the military, ran up in there. That's a coup. Mm. It's like, no, no, no. You need a Viking hat for it to be a coup. <laughs> no mamas. Have you seen any of the AOC uh, footage of her recounting her you know experience mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, i just happen to have one from msnbc pulled up so let's just kind of watch this briefly and then see uh see what you think if it plays which i'm sure it will just uh, unmute hit that little mm -hmm. thought to myself they got inside it felt like my brain was able to have so many thoughts in that moment um, between these screams and these yells of where is she, where is she? And so I go down and I just, I mean, I thought I was going to die. And that was, yeah. That's what a lot of it was. She was recounting this experience, thinking she was going to die. And what, what struck me as, as particularly odd was that she had um, compared a lot of it to her, like a sexual abuse experience that she had had and she mm. like started crying and by no means am i or are we making light of anything like that if it is true but you have to think like why would you because she said if people are just saying that for us to you know stop you know talking about it and get over whatever happened on january 6th and then compared it to that's like saying that when you have a uh you know sexual uh, abuser you know uh, do something to you you to forget about that and those two just don't really seem to go together it's yeah. a very bad comparison about talking about congressmen and senators and whatnot in that same light so you saw like she was conflating yeah two different things um well i know a thing or two about doing a live stream for 90 minutes <laughs> and people not liking it um so i mean i wasn't there i don't know what was going on in her head how she heard the echoes and the the yelling and the screams and um so maybe she did have a little bit of ptsd uh maybe she did hear someone say um where is she no i'm sure they did i'm uh, sure they did now now you know who i was really scared for mike pence yeah that guy. <laughs> i think i think alc would have been okay regardless uh, I don't think anybody would have, I mean, not, that's just me, you know, but yeah. Mike Pence. Yeah, boy. Yeah. They was after you, boy. Um, so she's, um, I haven't, I haven't watched her live stream, but, uh, she's very skilled at communicating. Um, you know, I'm sure the way she told the story was very like visual yeah. and captivating, especially to maybe a female audience, especially if it was like a Democrat female audience, especially if you were an AOC fan, you're probably like, man, fuck said, uh, Senator Ted Cruz. And you're probably extra mad at all those people that, that ran up in there. Um, I'm biased because 
I don't think those were your typical Trump supporters. I think right. it was a lot of riffraff. Like, okay, who's this motherfucker? You know, what's up with them tattoos? Why are you wearing your hat like that? Uh, obviously, we already saw the John Sullivan guy from Utah. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of riffraff mixed in. Um, so, shit, man, I feel bad for uh, AOC. However, she she always tends to be like the perpetual victim. Oh, like, yeah. She's always the victim and everything. Um, but I can imagine how that could have been, you know, upsetting for her. Um, so I'm gonna let her off the hook. You know, I'm not gonna. Wow, very nice words. It's, pro- it's probably some other shit she did that I'm like, ah, hell no, AOC. <laughs> very nice words. Very nice. Taking, now, it, taking it easy on AOC. Now, I will say this, though. Although it was an unfortunate assault, although it was, um, it was just embarrassing and nobody should have did that, regardless of how you felt with the votes and all that. Um, given that that was inappropriate, I don't think she needs to take it to the point of like, no, we need to cancel all Republicans because they are all white supremacists. They are all down with this insurrection. And that was a coup. That was an attempted coup. And this is not, that's where it's like, oh, kind of thing. Yeah, that, that's what they're doing. They're literally trying to, to put everybody together in this, like the people that all stormed the Capitol are in this group. The people that were doing this were all in this group. The people that think that are all, and just, you know, a whole blanket statement over the right. And it, it's it's like this power grab because they know that, there's going to be, you know, primaries and elections coming up, and they want to continue to regain seats that they well, lost. Yeah, they, they don't want to let that crisis go to waste. Oh, yeah. No, that's an opportunity. Just, just like they did with corona, just like they did with, with everything. It's been a power grab. Yeah. So, da cabron. Pinche corona, man. We're going, on, we're going on a year. We're in February now. Today's February 2nd that we're recording this. How do you feel about life right now, Chingo? Coming 12, you know, 11 months in now. How do you feel about it? Uh, man. Tell the public what you yeah. think. So, I mean, I'm anxious to get to get back to work. Um, I was listening to my stand-up material um, earlier today. Uh, my last set from College Station, because I've been rearranging and editing and polishing, and I have some new tags I want to work in, work in, but, uh, you know, haven't really had a chance. Yeah. So, I'm anxious. I'm looking forward to seeing what the feedback is, you know. You know, is it sold out? You know, are people, uh, are they happy to be out of the house? Are they scared over here? Are they ready to laugh? Are they uptight? Can you not bring up certain things? Um, so I guess the main word is anxious um, and a bit impatient because there's a there's a whole bunch of other projects that I want to get going and get off the ground, uh, especially stuff that doesn't have my name or face on it. Uh, but, you know, some of that stuff, it just takes a little bit more groundwork to get it up and running yeah so and i guess a little bit um annoyed or frustrated in terms of like we were like what you just said it's been a freaking year now they got other variants you know some of this stuff about this vaccine you know people have their concerns and things you know yeah um and then you you hear opposing ideas and thoughts and information like for example are they going to do the, uh, is China really trying to anal swab us? <laughs> Are they really trying to anal uh, test everybody? Number one. Uh, number two, the points that um, Tony Robbins brought up. Like, well, shit, man. What's up with that? You know what I'm saying? Like, is somebody conveniently trying to make the most out of this crisis? And, and you know me, I'm paranoid of, of other countries and how they, they're meddling in our affairs, right? Cause, yeah. Because that's what countries do. So it, it, it's just, it's, a, it's an interesting time because, as you know, a lot of people don't understand where I was coming from. You know, it's like, what the fuck? Trump, that's racist. Jingo, yeah. say it ain't so. <laughs> and it's like, ah, that's what they told y'all. But man, it, it ain't even, that's not even what it is. You know, that's the basic fucking elementary little narrative that they assign to you. And it sounds good. It's like, orange man, crazy. He said, drink bleach, and this stupid motherfucker voted for him. So it's like, mm. A little more than that, everybody. There's yeah. a little more than that to it. Uh, speaking of mm-hmm. the corona, I, what do we even call it? I mean, I, you know, I was listening to somebody talk about how, it was actually a nurse talking about how it was, for a short period of time, 
called uh like they had called it the china flu like in the media mm-hmm. like for briefly right before it became this like oh, oh now you can't say that oh there's no way you could say that right this video might get taken down just for saying that mm-hmm. uh but then it became obviously it's a racist thing it's a whatever thing and then it went to covid uh, or coronavirus right and then they made this uh this example of how other like we call other flus or other whatever by where they came from or like originated from other countries or other parts of the world or whatever and and then they they start making some really good points about just the absurdity of the people that got upset over calling it the Chinese flu. And now you saw like Biden pass that executive order. And it's this really, these really subtle, you know, tiptoeing into like, we're going to control what you do there. We're going to control how you say this. We're going to control this. Can't say that. And a lot of people are just cool with it. Oh yeah. No, like bro, like I said, most of the people that are Democrat or on the left or, or whatever, I'm assuming are on autopilot because you know, they're a guy one. And sure, he's doing 40 plus executive orders, but he's merely correcting and rectifying all of those evil orange things Trump did. So they're just like, I don't give a fuck. And it's not like CNN is sitting down, breaking down every executive order. All right, guys, this is your host. And for right. the, they're not going executive you, order by executive you order. Brian Selter. Fuck him. That guy, man. I was looking up. His show has been on. I don't know if he has been the host of it ever since, but 1992. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Yeah, and what, what's the show called? Reliable Sources or something mm. like that? No mamas. I fucking can't stand that guy, man. No, I can't stand him either. Because his thing is always like, you know, we need to... Uh, uh, he said, he said uh, they need to remove Fox News off of uh, cable networks because... He said, it's not a freedom of speech issue. It's a freedom, freedom of reach. Freedom of reach. Uh, exactly. <laughs> He's giving these talking points to these cholos that uh, are, are um, working their keyboards on my on my YouTube. Make sure y'all subscribe. <laughs> you know, because this little Brian Seltzer guy, Seltzer, Seltzer, whatever. He's literally coming up with these little talking points that people are going to use. So while I'm sitting here making a fuss about freedom of speech... Now these motherfuckers are like, it's actually freedom of reach, Chingo. It's not the same. It, the, f- technically, freedom of speech is when the government tells you. It's like, bitch, what if big tech is in cahoots with the government? Then what? Your boy DeSanti is making that, uh, he's presenting a bill. To, oh, did you yeah. see that? To where it would, it would, what would it give him? A $100,000 fine to big tech if you deplatform yep. somebody running for office? Oh, it's only for people running for office? That's what I read. Okay. So. I missed that little detail. Yeah. It might, I mean, it, you would think that it, that should be applicable to anybody. Like, you can't just kick somebody off a fucking platform because you don't agree with what they say. But especially if they're running for office, like in the middle of an election, you're just going to take them off your platform. 100 grand every time until they get access, every day until they get access to their shit. Oh, 100 G's a day. Yeah. Ah, well, you know what? I think that's a very excellent move because you have to be able to create some friction. Uh, I guess, is that what is that? It, does it have to go through legislation? How does yeah. it work with a, with a governor in their state? Uh, they just well, that's you're right. That's going to be a state law, so they have to they have to pass it just like you know federal laws. They have to pass it through their houses and the okay. legislation in their state. And hopefully, the idea is that other states follow suit yeah. and make that a statewide. Yeah, because you gotta. You have to like, you don't want to overcorrect, right? You don't want to over penalize big tech, but I mean, motherfucker, they got money. It's just, you got to create some friction and you got to fight back a little bit because what happens to um, democracy? What happens to um, the Republic and what happens to people's votes and, and, and things like that when they can just come up with any little thing to kick you out of the, uh, the town square? Because these days, Facebook, it's the town square. Like, if you ain't on there, shit, you just a crazy man in the field talking to himself. <laughs> you know, because it's like, it's there. It's a private company, Chingo. They can kick off whoever they want. And it's like, okay, all right, well. Uh, well, a, a really good lawsuit to look at here is uh, Crowder, Stephen Crowder. Louder with Crowder just filed yesterday a huge lawsuit against Facebook. And it'll be interesting to see what happens, man, because that, that guy, you know, I know um, Shapiro and some other people will say that they have like the largest conservative platform. But if you look at Social Blade or just look at do some research, like Crowder definitely has the biggest conservative show in the world. And uh, he's coming at him like he did a, a video on IG and then they came back yesterday uh, on February 1st and did a whole, you know, segment and a whole show about it. So they're they're not holding anything back, what's as they it, say. What's his lawsuit about? 
uh, everything, all of their basically like malpractices, like the way that they throttle stuff, that the way that, because he made a point that, you know, they've lied basically to Congress. They, they've lied to people like to their faces under oath where they said, we don't do this. We don't do that. You know, we used to do that, but we changed our guidelines or whatever. And they've got, you know, the proof to back up that they've been kicked off. Their things have been, their streams have been throttled. Their, uh, the reach has been suppressed, all this shit. So it, it'll be interesting to see how they word everything and what exactly it is that they're coming after mm. Facebook for. So. so you can sue them on some shadow ban type shit. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Because I know Candace Owens has her own thing. and um, So what's their argument? Like, well, we have algorithms and sometimes your reach is affected. That's a good Facebook argument. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do that, they say, well, we have terms and agreements and community guidelines. And like, don't they have to have an excuse like Crowder? On this day, you posted this, and our team feels that you know it goes against this. Well, that'll be and the that's interesting. why that'll be the interesting to see how they mm-hmm. argue that because they've already had these conversations in Congress before, and now they might be phrased a different way, and are their answers going to be you know the same as what they told you know Senator Cruz or other senators or congressmen? I don't know. It, I just feel like it's interesting because when, when that guy does something like he does it to the max, and he even he tweeted because he fucked up his leg, he's got a heart condition, he's his wife's having twins, mm. so he was off of uh, his show for almost two months. Man. Yeah, so he's got like a rare like heart condition uh, where he's going to the Mayo Clinic to get treated and all mm. kinds of crazy shit. But still, in the midst of all that, he's like, we're coming for Facebook's ass. <sighs> oh, yeah. Project Veritas leaked some shit. Yeah. Um, what was it? It was, the, oh, that Facebook admitting that they have too much power, right? And then you had people already, this was a thing the day before yesterday, um, on CNN saying, well, yeah, they have too much power, but, and then they go into these reasons for justifying what this, you know, abundance of powers is good for or why they have it. It's fucking, I don't know, it's bizarre. Uh, it is February 2nd and motherfuckers still ain't got they stimmy. <laughs> uh, however, critical race theory is back. And uh, I want to play this little audio. Well, look, there goes punk ass Jimmy Kimmel. Um <laughs> The thing about the the books that they have at Target. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. Let's take a look at the nonfiction section in Target. First, we have me and white supremacy. Next up, how to fight racism. Then we have how to be an anti-racist. Following that, we have white fragility. Why it's so hard for white people to talk about race. Then we have, so you want to talk about race? And I could go on, but we'll end with black dignity in a world made for whiteness. And just before we go, let's take a look at the children's section with hits like All Because You Matter and Anti-Racist Baby. So let me make this clear. You are being brainwashed and manipulated. I don't care who you are. People of color, you are being brainwashed into thinking that you are a victim and that you are hated and then manipulated into using your voice, your vote, and your time to support people who do not share your interests and frankly do not care about you. And white people, you are being brainwashed into feeling guilt that you should not feel, manipulated into closing your mouths and blamed for an issue that has been exaggerated beyond belief. It is due time that we all wake up. Let's take a look at the novel. It's always got to be about the race. Yeah, because think about it, man. If your whole political party can convince the masses that they're the the good guys that are diverse, um, anti-racist, and all that, you paint the other team as the racist. You got everybody believing in white supremacy, racism, systemic racism, and oppression. Who? How? You, how how could you lose? Yeah. How could you lose? People don't have to do no research. They just already know. I'm with the non-racists. And yeah. it's like, what if I told you those motherfuckers were racist too? Or, or yes, they're, they're the racist ones. You know what I'm saying? In general. I mean, because all humans are biased. We're all, our brains are pattern recognition machines. So there may be times where, you know, where you're walking down the street and it might be the smart thing to do. To cross, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm saying me. I know jujitsu and all kinds of shit. Oh, hey. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about like if you AOC or somebody and you just like a single female and you're walking and shit's sketchy and it's dark. Shit. You gonna, you know what I'm saying? You better cross the street. I don't yeah. give a fuck who it is. <laughs> like you gonna, in the fear of being labeled racist, you fuck around, get mobbed and yeah. fucking robbed and shit, mugged. Um, so yeah, it's a very... It's a very pervasive thing. Like people really, 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 really believe in in that most white people are racist. Some people really navigate their everyday lives as victims. 
thinking that like um, all white people out to get me. Things are always unfair. It's because I'm brown. Um, you know, and I hate to say this, but it, it's not, we all know that's not really the case, right? It's the people that are on social media. You know, we're, we are there. It, there's something to say for those that don't have anything to provide on social that are just there consuming, constantly consuming all this stuff mm -hmm. and not producing anything. They're just constant con consumers and not producers of content. If you go down the street and you go to the gas station or you go to the grocery store or whatever, you wouldn't even believe that what you see on social media is is real, right? Because the cat, the black cashier, and the Asian person behind the the fucking you know whatever market, uh, mm -hmm. vegetables, produce, mm -hmm. says hi, whatever, smiles, hey. You would think that everything that's on social media is a complete lie because it always seems like the world's on fire. But mm -hmm. if you just go to the to the grocery store, everybody's pretty fucking cool, right? Mm -hmm. I think that if more people just and we've said this before, just disattach, unattached from social and the apps and the constant. Mm -hmm consumption of this this you know idea that everybody's racist and the whole world's out to get you and the white people are the fucking worst ah uh, dude it's just i don't know I, I don't know how else to phrase that eloquently other than it's just not really the case yeah yeah i think even if people do detach from social media they probably still get it at school yeah they're, be, they're being indoctrinated uh if you turn on the tv that's a whole nother form of media where a lot of these hollywood type of films they they perpetuate you know you all you got to do is log on to netflix and they reminding you you know what i'm saying uber eats they reminding you who's oppressed who needs help you know what i'm saying who's the downtrodden um i don't know man I, and you know what i will admit like i used to be that kind of person i used to be like kind of militant and uh super skeptical yeah right so i guess as I've grown older and wiser, I feel like, yeah, it's okay. You could you can have a little bit of skepticism for some things. But, I mean, think about it, bro. I went to like a pretty much all-white prep school for high school. Right. So, like the first, I mean, even probably the first two years, I was still very on edge. Like, the only reason I'm here with this little <laughs> punk-ass scholarship is because these little rich white motherfuckers, they parents paid extra because they got a real beaner in their class. <laughs> and I, I'm just a lab rat. I'm just a lab rat here to make their experience better, you know? And then slowly it's like, well, wait a minute. I go here too. I'm a student here. Like I, all this nice shit, the, the little cereal bar and shit at the breakfast and family style dinner and the manicured lawns, all this shit is here for me too. You know, the nice art building and the, the you know, the theater and it's like, take advantage. And it's almost like a microcosm of America. It's like, you can either be an American citizen but always feel second class, always feel like an outsider. Ni yeah. de aquí, ni de allá. You know, so, somos mexicanos, somos raza, y no nos quieren, güey. Neta, güey. Tell the truth, chingo. Tell the truth. If, you know, if you didn't, if, if Trump had his way, he'd deport you too. It's like, I thought Trump liked Americans, right. people that contribute, people that uh, bring value, appreciate the Constitution, Bill of Rights, and, and you know, I think he'd be like, Chingo, you about America? Cool, nigga, you would have. <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so um, like, going back to uh, the homie Gil, you know, that's some of the stuff that, that he was saying is like, uh, you know, tell the truth. You know, they, they, they don't care about us and this and that. And I'm like... Is that what he was saying? Ba basically, it was like this okay. overall tone of I can mind read, uh, don't nobody want us here. And it's like, uh, I feel you, bro, because I used to think, I used to, I mean, I'm Mr. They Can't Deport Us All, and, you know, I have you know, my whole, the type of glasses I had on, I saw like, yeah, that does, it, the math checks out, you know, that is oppression. Oh yeah, that is white supremacy. Or like, oh, we kind of are second class citizens. And like, oh, it's ni de aquí, ni de allá. And you know, my parents are immigrants. So how could I be uh, uh, one of y'all? You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's, it's as if I just got here. But as you get older and wiser, you start to see like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Some of this shit is just narrative to get you to fucking do what they want you to do. So really, the racist ones are the ones busy perpetuating, uh, what's the word, promoting this narrative that America is inherently oh, racist. perpetuating. Yeah, yeah. The, the 1619 Project. And, you know, you know, it, it wasn't that long ago, Chingo, that, you know, they was doing this to our people and this and that. And I'm like, okay, bro, it's 2020. What law, what legislation is there that says... A Mexican American can't buy a house, can't vote, can't do this, can't be an entrepreneur, can't take advantage of capitalism, can't vote, can't, you know what I mean? It's like, 
show me the racism. What? Yeah. Because and and I told I said whoever's listening when I was on that podcast, I said whoever's listening, I would advise y'all to diversify your friends. I would advise if you don't have any conservative friends or Republican friends, get you some. Yeah. Only because I said you never know they might be your main customer. They might become your your distributor for your product. They might come in handy they might want to like uh partner up on this business idea like most of the um conservative republican friends that i have they're all in gung-ho what do you need let me spread the word how, how much how much they going for i, I want to get a thousand of them mm. and pass them out if i got to you know what i'm saying like everybody um that that all the friends that i've made from the conservative world uh republican world a lot of them are like business owners contractors whether it's construction restaurant uh type of work all kinds of shit and motherfuckers are resourceful chingo i got a link for you I, I, you have you met such and such yeah. i'm gonna plug you in with him i'm gonna give you his number you know motherfucker he, he bugs a lot but he can help you in that department yeah and it's just like value it's just asset it's just help it's positivity it's productivity it, it ain't no complaining there ain't no whining going on. There ain't no blaming other motherfuckers for shit. Yeah. Why we ain't got shit. Why we ain't doing shit. Hell no. Nah. So get you some Republican friends and some conservative friends. I know some people are going to hear that rant and call me a fucking coconut sellout. Oh, gringo bling. You want to be white. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. That is so tired and lame. Like, if you be more creative with your insults. Like, find something legit to insult me. And then, oh, they'll just try to pull up, oh, shit. Remember when you made these fuck Donald Trump shirts? Yes, I remember. Stop posting it. Like, you post the same picture every day. I, we talked about this, too, on, on our previous episode, where, but that is the case, right? Like, you want to try to diversify your friends, get yourself some left and right. But we also said, or I remember saying, the way that the climate is now, it makes it harder for people to want to just forget the fact that that friend's a lefty and that friend's a righty or whatever, or that person's a fucking, you know, centrist, moderate, and they can't see past that, unfortunately, right? You want to try to just forget that they voted this way or they kind of have these kind of beliefs because at the end of the day, like, we are humans. We should just be on side team human, right? As much as we love being on side, we're from Texas, the Cali folk also love to talk shit about the Texans and say that those Hispanics or Latins or whatever are way different from the ones over there. Yeah, there's some differences culturally, somewhat, from your area. You're part of that patch of dirt versus this patch of dirt. But politically, it's the same thing. We should all just get along, though. Like, we all got to make the communities work. We all got to make our cities and states work, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to be through division. And you know what I'm saying? This is the podcast of unity. Well, some people don't see it like that. Some people see that... It's one-sided. It's biased. We really don't want unity. Why are y'all still talking about politics? Trump lost. That's the main thing I see on my Facebook. Why are you still bringing up politics? Why are you still butthurt? Take your L. We need to move forward and be united. So, so politics is just Trump. He's out. So why are you still talking about this? Yeah, basically. Like I made a point. I was saying maybe four years from now, our Latino leaders can come like lobby and come up with like Where's our brown platinum plan? You know, where was our offer of like a contract with, with brown America? I'm not saying we need handouts or, or, or anything like that. We're all too busy working, but for the most part. But but what my, the point I was trying to make is our quote unquote leaders were too busy being cheerleaders. Wasn't nobody, wasn't nobody saying, uh, hey guys, I, um, I sat down with you know, different leaders and this is what we have. Go to the website. Um, it's a 10 point thing. These are some things, you know, free the kids in cages. What's up with this immigration amnesty or what are we doing? And obviously it might be a list of demand. This is all hypothetical. Sure. To where maybe won't, not everybody will agree, but it would have been nice as a conversation to have been like, all right, man, Evelyn and Gory, I don't want to say names and shit, but like hypothetical, right? Let's just say fucking, uh, I just, X Y Z. There you go. Fill in the blank. <laughs> Just fill, fill in, in the use blank. Use your imagination. Use your imagination. You could put. You could make him Eugenio Derbez, but he's from Mexico, so he kind of. He. You know, I'll give him a pass. But whoever could have said, we we're sitting down with uh, both political parties, and we're trying to see who's really going to take our vote into consideration, and we're going to have some leverage, and we're going to negotiate. We might not get everything on the list, but we're waiting on each party to get back to us and and tell us what they're able to do realistically sure some of y'all are saying but those are just campaign promises okay maybe but at least 
they have a chance and we're not just squandering our vote and just giving it to the Espacito just because, you know, so that's the point I was trying to make on my social media. But people just want to be like, nah, you just want to be white fool, or ah, coconut or ah, you still crying because Trump. I'm like, no, I'm saying I'm trying to be helpful here. Maybe in four years, it would be nice if America Ferreira or somebody, <laughs> somebody, it ain't me. I'm canceled. Yeah. I'm canceled. Too many people see me as biased uh, with an agenda and one-sided. But some of these other people could be like, well, look, the Republicans said they're going to do this. The Democrats said they're going to do this. Now y'all take that how y'all, how y'all fucking choose. Instead, we didn't do none of that. We didn't do no negotiating. We had no fucking leverage. And we just, it's like... It's like we just dropped the draws. It's like, all right, look, you ain't even got to buy us a drink. <laughs> Basically, right? You ain't even got to call us back. They just gave it to the same party they always give it to. No, no Vaseline. People, I don't know. We, we're the ones, you know, talking about it, uh, watching stuff, reading stuff, you know, making sure we're up to date with what's going on, having forming these ideas and opinions. But it's exhausting, right? Mm -hmm. It is absolutely exhausting for people that aren't doing this for, let's call it a, you know, a job sake to have to listen to this every day and just be inundated with like both these sides and like who's making sense and I can't relate to that guy, you know, Pachingo makes sense, but also, I, I don't know, do I believe him? Is he yeah. super biased himself? It's, it's tricky. Well, the fact that I did do a 180 should give me more credibility credibility for sure people don't see that no if i just stuck if i should just kept my mouth shut and just stayed over there with, with you know who like just the same old orale democrats yeah and ain't no party like a democrat party and it's like well i mean i could have kept my mouth shut and like what you were saying you know it gets annoying and frustrating be, you know this this whole subject so it's it part of me is kind of like you know what man let these motherfuckers fall off the cliff fuck it yeah. Just let them. Just let them. And four years from now, you'd be like, don't say shit. Just smirk. Like, okay, <laughs> you know what the little smirk means. Bitch, I told you so. I can't wait. Actually, you know, it's four years out, but what's going to, I can already feel the tension brewing from the people that right now feel this, you know, disenfranchised and have no uh, faith in the election integrity and whatever, whatever, however you want to phrase it. The transparency. The transparency, how everything happens. It's going to be so interesting. Like four years is going to fly by, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, to see who's running. Does Trump come back? Who do they put in that seat? Right. Who's going to take that, you know, swing at running for the Republican Party? Uh, is Tulsi Gabbard going to run? Are they going to let her? That's it. I think she said she didn't want to. Oh, OK. Yeah. According to her Rogan episode, I think mm. she's too busy doing a podcast mm -hmm. and doing a YouTube show. But yeah, man, I mean, there's got there's a lot of stuff that needs to be worked on and improved before we go at it at, for another election cycle before the, everything well, just crumbles well for one election transparency nobody on the left is willing to have the conversation you know because their guy won right so they're 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 gonna be very hesitant to say all right guys you know we know a lot of people weren't happy and didn't really trust the outcome so we're gonna make sure that uh you know coming up by the next time the next one rolls around you know, we're going to get rid of this type of ballot, you know, only going to do these kind. We're, we're not going to do this kind of software and so on. We're not even having that conversation so that four years from now, people aren't just like, man, this shit don't even count. It shit don't even matter. So can you imagine, Rob, if we stick with this platform and this lane for four years? I mean, that's a commitment. Ooh, yeah. It's a commitment. But can you imagine what kind of steam we might be able to build up in four years? How many episodes? How many clips? Somebody, you, how many eyeballs? How many impressions? How many views? How many shares? To where you might be able to red pill a handful of motherfuckers. Because right now, we're probably just preaching to the choir. People that, that just were like, yeah, I knew it was bullshit too. <laughs> um, so that's the hard part, right? Getting people from... Because according to everybody, this is the dark side. Right. Because they're like, oh, you went to the dark side, homie. That's why I keep using the Imperial March music when I make uh, a clip or uh, something. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. I, I need to peep that. Um, so can you imagine, bro, if we just stay on this journey for four years? Just imagine for a second. It'll be what? 2024? Yeah. It'll be 2024. Is my math right? Because we're already in 2021. Yeah. So 2025? Is it 2025? 
It's probably 2024. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the number I've been here. Yeah, you're right. 20, it'll be the end of 2024. Yeah. Uh, so can you imagine how many things Biden will fuck up? You know, how high the gas might be, how high insulin might be, how many wars we might be in, how many troops get shipped off, how much taxes go up. Um, you know, they, they're shifting us to this uh, Green New Deal. They want to go electric on these vehicles. Okay, how many more jobs you going to kill? How many more wars we got to get in to go defend this oil that we're trying to suck up out of somebody else's ground? Um, how many of these China, uh, these batteries, these lithium batteries or whatever, they go in these cars, they got to be made where? China. So a lot of this shit's benefiting other countries, not us. So what is the tone and what is the climate going to be four years from now? When people are going to, I'm going to be four years older, you're going to be four years older. Just imagine for a second, we're still doing this show and people might be like, hmm, you know what, bro? Even in 2023, I really wasn't seeing what the fuck you were talking about. I kind of checked out on you for five years. But man, what is up with all this war? What is up with all this taxation? All this like non-transparency? Like, are you are the elections going to be more trustworthy four years from now? Or is it just going to get worse? Um, what kind of stupid shit is Trump going to do between now and then? You know, office of the former president in Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, I don't know too much about that, but I mean, it's just interesting if you think about it, right? Because I mean, it's exhausting, like you said. Like, okay, fuck it. You know, I ain't got to do this shit. I could just let y'all be crash dummies. Uh. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep giving your vote to one. Keep giving one political party a monopoly on your vote. And I told that dude Gil. Because he kept saying shit, we're Rasa, and we're supposed to, you know, you can't disrespect the people, and, and, and you know, these are the Rasa, and we got uh, to gotta look out for those. And I'm like, Gil, you could continue to vote along the lines of skill. You can continue to vote according to skin color. Yeah. I was like, you're more than welcome to keep voting according to skin color. I was like, that's you, bro. I'm, I'm, I don't see things like that. Yeah, there's something strange about the, the affinity that people will have to a particular ca cause or color or whatever and think that because that this side aligns with what the, you think these ideas are, you have to stick to that, right? There's no flip-flopping. There's no basically just educating. Don't change your mind. Yeah, changing your mind. So it, it's sad to see, but, you know, it is what it is. Like you said, you can do what you want and people will. But there is, like you can, there is redemption for whatever you think right now is the evil side or whatever you think is is wrong or morally wrong. Because you might find, your situation might change. You might just get to a point where you have kids, you started a business, all of a sudden this shit makes way more sense than that shit. I think that's, yeah. that's possible in four to five yeah. years for people. For people, yeah. For people. There might, who knows, it, with an open mind, uh, you might, these days, bro, you just got to stumble across the right persuasive communicator that can allow you to see things from a different perspective so unfortunately i think we're a lot of our people <laughs> yeah right our our gente our gente the way we're at right now where we're at for the most part is basically um if you if you vote that way you have turned your back on your people and it's like huh I didn't know Democrats were my people. Yeah. It's like, well, you heard what Trump said. I'm like, well, you know, he ain't got all of us rapists. Because, you know, I, I, saw, I saw a debunk on the uh, Trump calls Mexicans rapists. Mm -hmm. I saw a debunk uh, on the Mike Cernovich documentary called Hoaxed. Hmm. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. I might have to rent it again just, just to screen grab that part. Because that right there... That's where Trump lost a lot of Mexicans. That's yeah. the thing that it's kind of like, oh, yeah, you vote, you Mexican, you voted for Trump. Well, explain this then. And it's like, look, man, I think he was talking about MS-13. He didn't say all of us. And the way I see it is he was trying to clean up all departments, including the border. And it's like, well, what about the Canadian border? OK, cool. We shouldn't let them off the hook either, because I understand shit comes in through over there, too. However, you know, that's just one fucking issue. And you about to sign up, you about to sign up to this other side that's about to bring, in my opinion, a whole bunch of havoc <laughs> and, and fucked up narrative. And they try to blame everything on the white man. They got this critical race theory shit. You see these books they got at Target. It's kind of like, okay, you don't have to see that as brainwashing, but start to pay attention to all the things they're putting in your environment. To, to and especially if you got kids, because 
if you're going to become woke one day, and meanwhile, your kids are in these public schools and they're just putting all this shit in their heads, like teaching them that they're victims and that it's the white man's fault. And this in this country, you should be ashamed of this country because it's inherently bad. And they used to have slaves here. And how dare you? And this, that and the third. And all you got to do is have a couple assholes run up in a building, give one of those motherfuckers a Confederate flag. And here we go again. See, see, I saw it. On, I saw it with my own two eyes. It was a Confederate flag in the insurrection. And it's like, okay, what the fuck that got to do with me? I, I, you said woke, right? And we say it all the time. I hear it all the time. I almost feel like that, that word means way too many things to too yeah, many people yeah, right now. Yeah, true, true, true. So let me use a different word. Um, you may arrive at a place where you no longer subscribe to the idea that Democrats are the only thing popping for, for Latinos. That if you're Latino, Democrats are the only ones that care about you. It's like you might graduate to a, a different form of thinking where you might actually look at policy and start to be like, well, I'm a business owner. I got to pay attention to taxes. What state do I live in? How many kids do I have? And stuff like that. Yeah. You know, are they soft on crime? Uh, 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 are your leaders soft on China? I was going to start looking it up, but it, it doesn't even matter because it's like one article will say like woke is, is defined as a... Uh, it comes from Af -American, African American culture. It means this, that, and the other. And then the you know the Urban Dictionary might be like a progressive left. Somebody yeah, in the I, mind. I, I'm not gonna use it no more because, for the most part, I think the way they use it for the most part is like, um, kind of like the NBA putting Black Lives Matter real big exactly on the court. Yes, because they're trying to be woke, like Sephora canceling Amanda Insane, right? Because they want to be, I guess, cater to <clears> their woke <throat> people. So yeah, fuck that word. I'm not really down with that. We word. got yeah, we got to find a new word. It, it's unfortunate because you know, didn't uh, Snow the product used to put that on her beanies back in the day? I think she still does. I don't know if she does anymore, but for a minute, that was like her uh, like her movement. It, it used to she, mean something, you know. Yeah, I think for her, the way she was branding it, 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 it didn't have a political connotation at all no i felt like it yeah. was just like enlightened and open-minded yeah i could be wrong probably yeah because then she switched it to vibe higher she evolved it to uh to a different thing which oh was, nice which is vibe higher but i remember her like when she did the woke thing uh i want to say it might have been like bay area slang mm. too around the same time that makes i mean that's and that's another thing yeah you're right she got really offended when all this stuff popped off. Because I've known her for a long, long time. She was first, first, first starting. Like, I was new, and she was first, first starting. Um, when all this Trump stuff on my little clip and people tagging, people hopping on Snow the Product's page, at Snow the Product, please tell me you disavow this sellout, coon, coconut, wannabe, gringo bling, at chingo bling, da 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 And she probably got so many of them that she's like, what's going on? Uh -huh. And she went to go take a look. Obviously, she's like first generation Mexican. She's obviously like, uh, has a big heart. and She's empathetic for yeah, she the, the causes of the people, as we all are, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, as we all are, we all want, we all have hearts. So she just jumped on my page and was like, um... Like, that's it. I don't want to hear no more Mexican jokes out of you. Uh, <laughs> something, 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 something. But uh, I think she, she went to my, then she hit me in a DM. And I think she had calmed down a little bit. She's like, hey, I deleted my comment, but I really don't understand. And like, Chingo, I'm over here. She was like, I'm over here at the strip club in Miami. And I can't even focus, right? You know, because I'm trying to figure out what the hell went wrong with you type of thing. And I was just like, look, it's complicated enjoy yourself have a good time we'll talk about it later it's really hard to explain yeah. because w like like when people come at me on the comments like oh you're just mad because you got called out da -da -da. i'm like called out there there are literally hours and hours and hours and hours of me talking ad nauseum about this motherfucking subject which is shit's nuance it ain't all about Democrats all the time. And it ain't all about Republicans all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just that Trump was the dude that was getting all this fake news on him. I, I started noticing the power of the propaganda. And I started seeing how he was a populist and how it wasn't a bad thing to make America first. It wasn't a bad thing to make America great again. However, it got branded as fucking racist Trumpy Trumpers. And I'm like, well, that's unfortunate. 
because I think the dude's making a lot of sense. He's calling out the swamp. He's calling out the media. But uh, but here we are, man. You know, we talk about it at nauseum. But shit, you're going up against CNN and Brian Seltzer and fucking J Lo and and all these people. There's just too many good resources where you can go find out a lot about some of the stuff we've talked about that have actual numbers and graphs and and really really deep research. Like, where's the biggest greatest inequality? You know, the 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 racial divide and the the money divide and why are places like Switzerland and Denmark so you know different and they're very like you know considered you know democratic socialist type of places but have you know great uh communities and great you know things are taken care of and people live happily but anyway so you can find that stuff out and still at the end of the day come to the realization that america is still the best place to be yeah like you really can yeah but people love to bitch and complain it, yeah, and it's... And won't leave. Again, I don't know. It could be, you know, my mother's from Mexico. I spent a shitload of my youth in Mexico. I love going there. I love my family there. It's awesome. It ain't better than here. I'll tell you right now. My father was in the military. I appreciate my grandfather, whoever has served, you know, to, to protect what we have here. It's just, it's really disheartening to hear somebody want to attack the U.S. like so blatantly every day. It sucks. It's a worse. It's a trend. You got you got all the mainstream media and these TikTokers that are like the kids that are doing twelve year olds. The twelve year olds, man, the twelve year olds are killing it on TikTok with their like how they're they're so smart. They're just regurgitating stuff from the news, like yeah. like you know they're reading yeah. teleprompters really really well, and doing shit like this land is stolen, blah blah blah. You know that kind of shit. It's like God, there's so much more to it than just that, dude. Uh, I recommend Prager U. The first time I saw a, a clip pop up on YouTube from Prager U, Prager University, I was like. You know, I wasn't open to any, I, I wasn't familiar with the ideas from the right. You're right? going to trigger some people. Oh. They're not a real university, Chingo. Well, that's fine. Call, them, call it what you want. It's a media company, right? They yeah. make videos to educate folks. Um, actually, Red Pilled America did an episode on them. Oh, dope. And on Dennis Prager and how he, he lived in Israel, I think, for a while mm -hmm. and how he started the company and so on. But my point is this. People like Dennis Prager, uh, Thomas Sowell, uh, Gad Sad, Jordan Peterson, even though Jordan Peterson doesn't really talk about politics that much at all. These are people that are smart and make sense. Um, but the first time I saw the Prager U clip, it was like an ad on YouTube. And I'm like, see, look at this shit. Th these, these right motherfuckers. That's how they, they creep into your home. They want to indoctrinate, you know, the people. And they over here spewing all this, all this stuff. What is all this stuff? All this they, sense. You know, what is all this <laughs> common sense? Talking about capitalism. What is, what, what is get, get out of my household, y'all sneaking in. That's how they do it, babe. That, that's how they get you. You know, they you're watching a kid's cartoon. Next thing you know, Dennis Prager on here talking all this right shit. But if you listen to it, they debunk they talk about like why is socialism so trendy? You know why is it so dangerous? Why has it never worked? And what's the difference between uh, liberal and um, left, like far left, and versus progressive, and and this, that, and the third, and how liberals got a bad rap because liberals technically are pro capitalism, right, and things like that. But you have these leftist ideas that come in under the cloak of liberalism and stuff like that. So. The shit gets complex, but um, if you're new to the show, please give us some feedback. If we're just preaching to the choir, then fuck. Then hey, <laughs> y'all tell the rest of your friends and let yeah. it continue to grow. But no, I would say I would even say look into the comment section of some of the uh, what did he say on the what did he said page, and notice how there are conversation. There are some like arguments going down, but there's a lot of conversation and there's a lot of man, you know. I'm glad to find other people that are talking about this kind of stuff that look like me or sound like me kind of thing. And I used to not be a fan and now I am a fan again. Or I was a fan, now I'm a bigger fan. I've been telling my friends. So it's this community of people that are growing and continuing to to spread the word. But it's it's not like this is the way that it is. It's, man, you know, I see that over there and it makes a little bit of sense. And then I see this over here and it also makes sense. So the whole idea is, right, you can watch a Dennis uh, Prager video or a Prager U video and then watch anything on the left, I mean, whatever, Bill Maher, um, fucking your boy Trevor Noah or whatever, and then just start uh. to dissect it and just see if it makes sense to you. And if one, 100%, everything they said is true, factual, it makes sense to you, and the other doesn't, then I guess it's just what you believe. That's just innate in you or inherent in you. Yeah, but how many people actually like try to do a deep dive analysis and compare and then arrive at their own opinion? What usually happens is, you're primed first 
and then they hit you with some shit out of context. So it's a lot of persuasion that goes on. No, you're absolutely right. But like even with to go back kind of to bring GameStop back into this, when it comes to the market or business, you can't get emotional about it, right? If you bet on this stock's going up or that stock's going down, and you're trying to short it or you're trying to do whatever, or you're trying to write it out long and you only invest in the S&P 500 or whatever, you don't get emotionally attached to it because it's money, right? It's business. The same thing with politics. I, I know there's some emotional policies that get passed and talked about. Like wear your pearls and your Chuck Taylor. <laughs> right. But you can't get so emotionally attached that it, it disattaches you from friends, family, or the world thinking that they're bad, I'm good, they're evil, you know, whatever. It's just not, not ideally the way you want to approach that. You want to try to open mind. You want to try to prosper in the market. You also want to prosper with your community. Like why would you just shun everybody out? Well, that's what's happening. That's what they try to do to uh, Amanda Ensing and, and people like that. Like, it's like a trend. It's like the cool, everyone, the way I see it is like half the country just feels that they're high and mighty. And, uh, and you know, you can't compare Antifa to that insurrection because Antifa was fighting for George Floyd. It's like, shut the fuck up. Antifa ain't shit. Fuck Antifa. All they do is destroy and shit. They, they, you don't want no Antifa friend. No, you absolutely don't. Yeah, get off Antifa's nuts, everybody. Uh, let's circle back around to one thing before we let mm -hmm. it go, because I know you got uh, both girls here and you want to mm -hmm. have some family time. Yes. But um, bring back COVID real quick, coronavirus, mm -hmm. whatever we call it. Did you see that they're making or they're on the cusp of uh, releasing these at-home kits, basically, where you do your own swab up the nose, right? But it's not as invasive. It's not as deep as the ones we've all seen on the news. It's like... You can go half half the mm. distance, right, up to your brain, not all the way back to your brain. Okay. And then you put it into this little device that mm. then sends the results to your smartphone. To China. Oh, sorry. To your yeah, smartphone. yeah, yeah. Got it's it. exactly. To, uh, sends your DNA to China. Yeah, uh -huh. yep. Within 15 minutes. <laughs> so the idea is that you'll be able to go to restaurants and concerts and mm. fly if you, you know, who, I don't know how much they're going to cost, but I, I started seeing the this fucking video of doctors talking about how it was actually it was a COVID-19 press hearing here yesterday or day before yesterday about that and I I had to think I had to immediately go to like man that's that's sketchy as fuck right but that's just where my brain goes I wanted to see what well, you thought about my it. brain as you were telling me this I was thinking uh free market cap yeah, somebody's getting rich off of that for sure capitalism uh are they publicly traded um how safe and legit how expensive are those kits right and do they have stock you know what i'm saying and another thing that crossed my mind was um the only thing we got to kind of look out for is how the government plays a role in yeah. in that particular uh option so i mean i think overall that's good news because anything that can give people uh peace of mind and can help us um comfortably and safely open up the market because at the moment, there's not a lot of rhyme and reason, you know. And the people, some people in California see it, some people don't. Like how all of a sudden, you know, a bunch of restrictions are getting lifted now that there's 1.5 million signatures uh, to recall Newsom. Yeah, man. A lot of people don't see it. They're just like, no, shut the fuck up, Chingo. Just take your L. It has nothing to do with, it's because they're keeping us safe, bro. It's for our safety. I'm like, all right, looks like your politicians are dicking y'all around. That's what it looks like to me. But hey, I'll just mind my business and shut the fuck up. Speaking of Pinocchio over here, let me cue it up real quick. This is literally from um, like last week, two weeks ago. And it's the it's like the 25th of January and then the 28th of January. And we're talking about masks here, all right? Mm -hmm. So let me cue it up. This is a physical covering to prevent uh, uh, droplets and virus to get in. So if you have a physical covering with one layer, you put another layer on, it just makes common sense that it likely would be more effective. And that's the reason why you see people either double masking or doing a version of an N95. There are many people who feel, you know, if I weigh. If it you really want to have an extra little uh, bit of protection, Maybe I should put two masks on. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's no data that indicates that that is going to make a difference. And that's the reason why the CDC has not changed the recommendation. Bruh. Yeah, so I heard Scott Adams chime in on this. And basically what he said, this is what he said. And, and that's why I fuck with Scott Adams, because 
It could be something like this, right? Where it's like, I just saw it with my own two eyes. Anthony Fauci, days apart, literally just said, motherfucker, y'all need to wear two masks. And then two minutes, two days later, he's like, well, there's no fucking scientific shit that proves that two masks going to be 100% mm -hmm. safe. So the way Scott Adams broke it down is this. Those two statements he made were still somewhere in between masks absolutely work and masks absolutely don't work. So he's still kind of saying the same thing. He's just saying, basically, on one, he said, two is going to be common sense and it's going to help reduce the amount of uh, water droplets and, and uh, basically creates more friction for the virus type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the second clip, he's basically saying... Well, it's not 100% guaranteed. So I guess the analogy would be like, okay, why? This is probably bad, right? I need to think this one through. Like, <laughs> why lock your front door if somebody could just come in through the window? You know what I mean? It's kind of like, basically, the way Scott Adams broke that down is like, he's still saying the same shit. He, he didn't say, you know, yes, he's saying it's not 100% proven. And then the other one, he's saying like, well, a lot of people feel two is common sense and two is going to help. So unfortunately, it just confuses people and it, it gives people more doubt. And if you're already an anti-masker, you're just like, yep, proof, right? Because now that's the bias kicking in. And then if you're pro-mask, you're like, see, he's an expert and he's telling us to wear two. So um, I guess maybe go listen to how Scott Adams broke it down. But he basically said like, He's still kind of saying the same shit. It still kind of falls under, yes, it's not 100% proven because there's no way to fucking really test that all the way mm -hmm. properly. Controlled study, placebo, control group, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. <sighs> I think we really saved the world today, Chingo. I don't know, man. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, you know, a lot of people want me to just shut the fuck up, stick to comedy, but... Uh, it's too late because you can do both. You can do it all. Yeah, I mean, you I don't do have her thing. That's right. And I don't have tour dates coming up until February 10th and 11th. And then uh, I think things pick back up in March. Uh, looking forward to a lot of these guests we have coming up, man. Sam Tripoli, uh, XG, co -produ uh, producer and co-host of Tinfoil. Um, Adriana from Red Pill America. Um, and next time, man, we, we can talk about uh, Andrew Cuomo, Governor mm -hmm. Cuomo, mm -hmm. how they're giving him some shit because he fudged the numbers on, on the deaths. From yep, the, uh, on the old people, right? Yep, and he got a Nobel Peace Prize. And then Lincoln Project was on some fuck shit. Uh, and then also how these, um, a lot of these false positives from the COVID tests are going to start coming down. Yep. Because conveniently, after Biden won, they were like, oh, uh, we found a little mistake as to how these, it's called PCR, the way they right. do the testing. So, you know, I think I'm sure Tripoli will have a lot to say about that yeah. if we get him on before then. But uh, a couple house cleaning notes too. Mm -hmm. uh, check out our producers in the show notes. So if you're signed up to our highest tier, you are a producer of the show and you have your name, your IG handle or a business website listed in the show notes uh, as a producer. Also, these free public Tuesday or Wednesday episodes, they're going to be limited to an hour. So if anything over an hour, they're going to be overtime, tamale overtime, and that'll only be available on Patreon. The Friday episodes are obviously only Patreon exclusives, and then Chingo Chats are also only on Patreon. So check out the Red Pill Tamales Patreon page if you want to sign up, you want to support us, you want to get us to that four-year mark where we're talking about this during the 2024 election mm -hmm. cycle. Oh, that would be fun. And uh, and I think we'll we'll definitely break some ground when it comes to our community about you know what we're talking about. Man, can you imagine, bro? If if five years from now, because as it is, a lot of minorities, like for example, I think Trump got more black vote than prior Republicans or something right, like that. Yeah. Like he performed better with the black vote. Uh, obviously, you got a lot of Cubans and Venezuelans and people like that on the Latin side that voted for Trump as mm -hmm. well. Uh, however, Eva Longoria was very proud about how the Latina vote helped get Biden elected. So way to go, Eva. Um, so can you imagine if five, four years from now, it just becomes an, a snowball where it's kind of like, it might be the Trump effect or maybe it's these crazy cuckoos all over the Internet. <laughs> right. But to be like, hey, people are, are looking at things different the conversation people diving in deeper and they're, and they're learning that the media is not always looking out for your best interest can you imagine if it's just like a snowball effect of like suddenly 
you know, Chingo's on the side where he's kind of popular. Like he's not, he's no longer fucking just hated by his raza because we're all victims. How dare you turn your back on us? Yeah, he, and, and popular in the sense of politics because you're yeah, already popular yeah, I, I mean, in the sense I'm of not, entertainment. I'm not, I, I'm not trying to look for likes and brownie points. What I mean is a shift in in the uh, public, what's the word? I'm not trying to tear apart what you just said. I know what yeah, you're yeah, saying. No, no, but I want to clarify. No, I really do because I'm not, I, I don't want to make it seem like, oh, I'm going to be on, I'm going to get some credit as to why all of a sudden Latinos are, are, are open to, you know, they want to demand more out of their vote. I guess what I want to say is this. Imagine four years from now where we're just a little bit more educated about some of this stuff and we don't just fall for the okie doke. And, and that's it. I think it'll be, I mean, shit, I'll be old as fuck by then. I'll be, what, 45, 46. That's old than a bit. That's damn near 50. That's old than a motherfucker. Damn, Yeah, that's son. just, yeah. Yeah, so it's an investment. <laughs> I mean, politics is an investment. So if you think about it, if we commit to this shit uh, just so that we could ride it out with this whole administration, this roller coaster ride, and then now we're going to be at voting time, then it really is a chingo warned, y'all. Because, you know, unfortunately... I started running my mouth about politics pretty much election eve. <laughs> Basically like the day of. That's true. Chingo warned y'all. I'll give you a day, bitch. <laughs> uh, so I think it'll be very interesting, man, uh, what the landscape will look like four or five years from now and what the country, the landscape and the narratives and how people might be like, try again, CNN. We're not falling for it. Or like, hey, Brian Seltzer, you're not that convincing. Or like Jimmy Kimmel, you're not that funny, bro. No. Trevor Noah, go back to where you came from. Hey. Real, real talk. So uh, if you are on the Patreon, we'll see you on Friday and then again on Monday. If you're not a, a part of the Patreon page, we'll see you again next Wednesday. A lot of value on that Patreon page. Thank you guys so much. Peace.